I was a student at SAP in 1964. I'm, eight, I'm dating myself here now, but 1964, uh, when there were very few you know, young men taking ballet. At one point when I was 16, going on 17, uh, Jerome Robbins saw me at the school and asked me, and asked Balanchine actually, uh, if he could use me uh, for watermill. Mr. Robbins told me the story. He said he went to Balanchine and said, Mr. B, is it okay if I use Jean-Pierre? And Mr. B said, yes, absolutely, because he's family. It's because he, you know, I've been at the, in the institution for already about six, seven years. Then I joined uh, the company in 1972, Stravinsky Festival. And now I became a ballet master in 1990 for Jerome Robbins, and I assisted him in traveling and staging his ballets, and now I'm a part of a, a group of dancers, I mean, ballet masters that uh, maintain his work. For Robbins' vocabulary, I don't think it's vocabulary, it's, for my, my opinion, I, I find it, it's, it's, it's human nature. It's, it's, he takes uh, things from outside that you see in the street or what he experiences when he travels and the, com the aspect of, of people in a village, a community, and he always creates some sort of a, a story, even though if it's abstract, a sense of, of you're looking at something very theatrical and that the audience is looking through a keyhole. Because what Jerry said, Mr. Robbins said, that the concert is, is a, a funny ballet, but it's not that you make it funny, it's the situations that are funny. You see all these characters at the, th at the theater coming to the ballet or going to the opera or going to a concert. You see that. I've seen these people. I've seen the usher. I've seen the shy boy. I've seen the two manly ladies talking, you know, gossiping in the back, and some man, a very serious man, goes, shh, you know, to them to be quiet. Some people thought Mr. Robbins was difficult, and I felt it had to do really with their own work ethic. I think Mr. Robbins actually um, very much worked very hard on his craft. He would do a lot of research before he choreographed. And he wanted the dancers to come in that studio because it was his time to work for them to be fully prepared. You have to actually come into the studio, leave your ego outside the door, and just trust him. And usually he was, oh, mostly he was always right because his, of his theatricality and his eye. He had a great sense of timing and, and, and theater that uh, I haven't seen yet. But for me, it's about uh, community. And to this day, the dancers, now, this generation, even though Mr. Robbins is not here, feel the same way. Example, when we did Dybbuk, they really felt, uh, and when they do dance opus jazz, they all feel very special for some reason because they, they're part of a, a group and it's, it's kind of a team atmosphere. And so it's really kind of, a, kind of a special feeling. It was like that when Mr. Robbins was alive and it's, I feel it's, it's amazing it's still like that, actually.